everybody, uh, Brian Good here. we got a lot to uh, discuss. Uh, as you can see here on our chart, our headlines today have been, of course, the three hurricanes and the big earthquake that happened in Mexico during the overnight period. Uh, the Tsunami Center, the Pacific Tsunami Center, is still registered as a uh, as a 8.2, uh, which they are their officials are saying the same thing, saying it's the strongest they've uh, have had in the century. Uh, all four agencies are going 8.2, but the USGS is still going 8.1. I don't know why there's a difference, but either way, we're sticking with what the uh, official tsunami center that controls that particular side of the ocean, and uh, they are going with 8.2. And it, what's really cool is that it actually registered on. The seismograph that we had in Sonora, uh, Kentucky, in Hardin County, it showed up uh, there as well. So it had far-reaching effects. Uh, it was a fairly deep quake, so it uh, was deep in the crust layer, so it, did, it was able to expand out pretty, uh, pretty well, so pretty wild to see that. All right, let's quickly talk about our weather locally, and then we'll get into uh, all the Irma stuff. Once again, a great shot of uh, looking at that fog forming in the, the valley area, some of that into Adair County uh, this morning. Uh, now we got clouds rolling in from the north. That is the actual cold front that is going to drop in here as we did this afternoon. So we're enjoying, at the moment, a, uh, a south wind. Uh, but as the front drops in from the north, we'll get back into that northeast flow again uh, later this afternoon into uh, tonight. And uh, I don't think it's going to affect the temperature much uh, for this afternoon. In fact, uh, we'll have a south wind and there's enough dry air play that we should easily get uh, well into the 70s. And the city uh, itself may actually hit um, the 80 degree mark uh, briefly this afternoon. But the front is going to knock us down just a couple degrees for the weekend. But overall, beautiful weather is what we're talking about all the way through uh, at least Sunday. And then that's when things begin to change. This was a really cool shot from the Goal 16, uh, the 3D imaging of, of Irma. Look at the eye wall. You can actually see where the eye wall will replace itself. The eye wall replacement cycle is what we call this. This happens in strong hurricanes. A hurricane can only maintain itself, a strong one, for so long. That's something having to give. It has so much energy. So it's kind of like a self-assurance of, it, of its uh, survival. Uh, the wall tears down and rebuilds itself, and it just powers the engine back up again, tears it down and powers it back up. And each time that little fluctuation of the tearing down of the eye wall happens and it rebuilds it again, uh, it, they do tend to weaken. And in some cases, you can drop a category. And that's so far as what's happened with, uh, with Irma. It dropped down to a cap four. When winds, uh, we'll see that in just a second. I think we're down to 150. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens now with this new wall. It's, it's not entirely intact yet. It's almost there. It's just now building it back up again. It's got to continue to wrap around a little more. As that wall establishes, establishes itself, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens um, to the intensity uh, at that point. But it has certainly grown in size, nearly doubled, really. And we don't have the buoys there in the Bahamas, but uh, the water is very, very warm in its path. Uh, so it's moving right into a uh, you know, category of upper 80 degree water, uh, which is just uh, at the very least will keep it maintained, but it could very well uh, get back up to that low end cat five uh, scenario. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. But again, the size of this thing, this is the significant part. You're talking about hurricane force winds that are very far out from the center. Uh, so this is gonna do a lot of damage over a large area and a lot of rainfall as well. All right, here's the latest report we have. Uh, again, this is going to be updated uh, for our midday show coming up today. But at, as of last check, winds 150. So cat 4, uh, gust to 190, move in west, northwest 16. Right now it's still open water. It's avoided so far since it uh, brushed the uh, Turks and uh, Caicos Islands. It's been over open water, but it looks like it's heading right into Duncan Town, the southern part there of the Bahamas. Here is the track from the Hurricane Center. Not good for Miami. That eye wall, this is where the eye wall does count when it comes to the actual path, goes west of, of, of Miami. That, uh, that flow out of the southeast and east is going to be tremendous and, and really uh, devastating and catastrophic really to, uh, for the storm surge to impact that area and the beaches. Uh, and it's going to be that case all up and down really at the coast. If that track continues straight up through the middle of Florida, which is so unusual, I can't even recall a track like that. I mean, it's going right over Disney World. The entire state gets raked. I mean, you're going to still have some strong winds from the opposite direction on the west coast, uh, but they're going to be coming in. So these little inlets, say, around, uh, I know it's hard to see the way I've got this drawn, but, you know, the uh, the Tampa-St. Pete area, that inlet, well, the water, the wind's going to be coming in from the northwest, so you're going to get a little, even a surge from that coming in uh, to portions of uh, St. Petersburg. So it's uh, going to be a wild event for Florida, unfortunately, and um, it's going to continue just to, to batter the east coast with that northeast flow. Uh, the better scenario would be for it to try to stay offshore, but the way this is trending, um, it looks like uh, it's going to be locked in on Florida. And then 
the question we run into for next week, uh, the high pressure that's moving in with our front today is our friend this weekend. It will move to the east by Monday, and the southwest corner of that is going to begin to weaken. And it's a matter of how much does that weaken uh, for it to uh, begin to see uh, uh, that turn to the north and northwest. And the models, uh, even the NAM model is really struggling. NAM's even trying to bring it to the Carolinas still. So it really is struggling with the, the intensity of that high pressure for the weekend. But in general, it takes it over to the northwest. And because the high is still going to be fairly strong, it is going to have a limit of how far northwest it can go. And eventually, the brakes are just going to hit it. It's going to hit a brick wall, and it's done. It's going to just kind of rain itself out wherever it stops. And it's not going to flood anywhere out. It's just going to rain itself out. So... Here is a, an experimental model that uh, IBM is using. Um, a lot of the TV stations in the country have access to this. We're, we're not able to show it on the air yet, uh, but this is it's called Deep Thunder of the name, right? Uh, here is uh, the latest look at it. It has the uh, very similar setup uh, to uh, a lot of the models, including the high-res zero of it being just west of downtown Miami as we end Sunday morning, Sunday evening, very close to Orlando, but has the eye onshore, but it's just battering those beaches with that east flow. And then uh, there's Jose, by the way, out there uh, coming into the same Allen chain near Puerto Rico that it already had hit and uh, devastated Irma did. And so one-two punch for them. That's horrible news. And I hope that's not lost in all this because they really are going to need some help. Uh, now, as we head into Monday, uh, notice it still keeps it on shore. So therefore, the eye or the center of it begins to, the pressure goes up. 973 millibars We begin to weaken it. But still, this is where your, uh, your tornado threat is certainly going to be an issue for the uh, coastal Carolinas with this kind of a track. Uh, and the beach is going to get battered. Now, we already, at that point, uh, if this is right for Monday, we'd already start to see some rain bands in your portions of wave country and some gusty winds. And then as we head into Tuesday, early in the morning, you see how it's uh, near Atlanta. Still got some feeder bands with it with that tornado thread ongoing. But we're in the northwest quadrant of that, which would keep the tornado thread out of the picture for us. Uh, but if the, uh, if the center of, of Irma does drift a little more west, uh, then north, then we would be in a zone we may have a brief tornado scenario that, to watch and monitor, but right now if this idea holds, we would be on the cooler side, if you will, the idea of the system, and uh, and then as we get into Wednesday, you can really say it just, really just weakens dramatically as a depression right on top of wave country with just scattering of showers. So, it, this could have more wind than Harvey did, but certainly it looks to have less rain, the way it's uh, balancing out. And then Jose has already done its path, and it's now beginning its turn back out. The question is, is it going to do a loop-de-loop -loop or not? We don't know. We'll wait and see how that plays out. Here's the experimental model on winds, sustained winds, not gusts, sustained constant winds. And these are in knots. It's got Miami at about 72, 73 miles per hour sustained as we into this weekend. For us, at our peak, I looked ahead. This is Jose, by the way. Uh, we are roughly about 20 to 25 uh, sustained mile per hour winds which is a depression level. So, again, it won't be too crazy. Actually, it may be, be similar to Harvey. We'll see uh, how that uh, plays out for us. Uh, here's your 14-day. Um, I know I haven't had a chance to really talk a lot about longer-term uh, stuff because we've had so much with the tropics. But in the longer term, we do, uh, once we get rid of Irma, we do see signs of uh, another surge of warmth coming our way back into the 80s uh, before another fall front moves in. And the last day of summer there on the 21st may start to see the effects of that front and start to cool things back down again. In fact, the, the second half or the end of September does look cool. Uh, but we'll focus on that once we get past Irma. It's been a busy uh, tropics, uh, tropical season here. All right, that's it for today, guys. Uh, I'll be on midday, and uh, everybody, the game will keep you updated later today all the way through the weekend, and I'll see you guys bright and early on Monday as Irma is uh, theoretically will be approaching at that time.